Hello and welcome back everyone to Human Resource Machine. We are going to take a look at year 28, three sword, and boy did that take me a long ass time to complete. So, um, the idea here is that you get three inputs and you are supposed to output them in ascending order. So, in this case we get 942, we are supposed to output 249. Um, in order to do that, you essentially have to implement a sort algorithm. Um, I was trying to remember from my studies what the best sorting algorithms were and the one that you learn first and that everyone tells you that is complete garbage is the bubble sort. Um, which is fairly easy to implement normally if you use a normal programming language, but in this, uh, you know, rather limited uh, set of commands. It's really not that easy actually. Um, my problem was that whenever I tried it, I tried to sort from C to A. So um, basically do a descending um, algorithm and that worked. But it had the issue that um, you couldn't do some of the tricky tricks you can do if you sort ascending. Um, as in whenever you have a check for if negative uh, you have to also put in an explicit uh, jump at the end um, if you do it the other way around uh, in in this case uh, if you do it ascending uh, you can actually just do like this and in case something is negative you just jump over a block and if something is not negative you do something uh, which turned out to be a lot better but um, if you do it the other way around, you just can't ever do it with enough uh, with um, within the command limit of I think it's 34 actually, is it? Yeah, 34. Um, so let's just quickly look how it's done. So you take from the inbox, you copy to A. You take from the inbox, copy to B. You take from the inbox, copy to C. Uh, then you copy from A. This is why I wanted to do it the other way around. Um, I wanted to take from C directly and uh, not have to copy it to save a command, but that ultimately always ended in me having at least one command too much. Um, but regardless, um, you copy from A, you sub B. Um, if it is zero, you just, you know, don't do anything. Um, if it's a negative, um, again, you don't do anything. Um, if, um, if it's not a negative, you take from A, copy it to T, take from B, copy it to A, take from T, copy it to B. So essentially you just do a swap. You just need this temporary variable to store the value. Um, then you copy from D, do the same thing. Um, if it's zero, you can just jump over it. If it's negative, uh, you jump over it as well. Uh, here you really need to check for both. Um, Otherwise, he will do a swap, um, which is a bit unfortunate, so you need two checks, but regardless, it works. So if it's not negative, um, you um, you have to swap again. And then you jump right back to the start until um, uh, it's negative all the time, I think. Right? Yeah, until it's negative all the time. And then you outbox. You go from A to B to C and outbox. So let's have a look at how that works in practice. You take from the inbox you copy it, you take from the inbox you copy it, you take from the inbox you copy it. So that's our basic setup. Uh, you then copy from A again and compare it to B. It's a positive so you have to swap it meaning that A is bigger than B. So you copy to T, copy from B, move that over, take from T copy to B and in a normal program language this is one command just says swap a comma B you know and I would just do the trick so you take then from B which is now 9 uh, you um, you subtract the C again it's not negative so you have to swap again and then you have B and C sorted what you can see now is that A and B are now in the wrong order still so you have to jump back to the start and do the whole thing again so essentially the idea and the reason why it's called bubble sort is that you always take um, the first element and bubble it 
to where it needs to go. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that is true for longer lists, to be honest. I can't really remember. Um, but, but that's the essential idea. You take one, one value and you bubble it up to the to the place where it needs to be. And now we go into the negative case because everything is sorted. And then we copy in order and move it to the outbox. Unfortunately, the, the, the reason that algorithm um, is regarded as not very uh, good is that uh, it takes a lot of steps. You take a lot of uh, loops, especially if the list gets longer, you take even more loops. And that makes it very expensive in terms of, you know, um, memory and, and things. So you will immediately see that um, whilst we get the size challenge, 43. And uh, the speed challenge, absolutely not. So I did a second version of it. Which is this little beauty. Yeah, pretty long, right? So I don't do any sorting whatsoever in this case. I just take all the three things from the inbox. For some reason I decided to do it in reverse order. Don't ask me why exactly. Um, and then um, instead of sorting, what I do is I do a lot of uh, essentially if-else type of branching. So I um, take A, subtract B, if that is negative, I know that A is bigger than B. Um, so if, if, sorry, if that's not negative, I know that A is bigger than B. So then I copy from A sub C. If that is not negative, I know that A is bigger than B and A is bigger than C. I, I, then, I then only need to figure out what the connection between, or the, the uh, relation between B and C is. And I know ev then I, I know everything I need to in order to output them correctly. So I do another subtraction B from C. And then I know that A is bigger than B and A is bigger than C and B is bigger than C. So I know exactly the order. Um, and then I copy. I just basically copy an outbox in that order and I do that over and over and over again for each and every uh, permutation of these uh, three values. So let's see how that works. I take my three values and put them into my variables. I then take A sub from B. That is a negative, so we jump into this case, which means B is bigger than A, which is correct, as you can see. I take A and subtract C, which is again negative, so I know that B is bigger than A and the C is bigger than A. So A is already the smallest, we already know that. And then I jump to the next one. And uh, so... Yeah, I'm now in that case where I know that B is bigger than A and C is bigger than A and C is bigger than B. So I know my my uh, my order in which to outbox them. And that's what I do. And then I go right back. So I take from the inbox. Copy it. And that's that. Got my uh, got my order figured out, and then just outbox, and so on and so forth. Again, the program will be in the description for you to copy. So that, while it works, I, as you can see, it's slightly above. So I still needed to cut some some of the code, so I did a third version that um, just has a bunch more checks um, so that I... Uh, essentially, it, mainly I eliminate jumps in this case. So, yeah. It, it does the same thing. Um, I copy into my variables, but um, first of all, I already uh, I start with just importing two values and then doing the first subtraction subtraction right away, and in case um, um, they have a th certain relationship, I just go into the next block then and it's all just a little bit more 
a little bit more optimized. I, I, to be honest, I don't really remember the details. Um, but essentially it does the same thing, right? It compares the values, it doesn't do any swapping or sorting, it just um, has a bunch of checks that determine the um, the permutation of these three values. Again, I will copy uh, the bo both the solutions for the challenges into the description, so don't bother trying to read it from the screen. So again, we are way above with our size challenge, but the speed speed the speed challenge is actually slightly below the allowed maximum. So yeah, that's the three salt. See you next time.